In today's video, I would like to share with you how I came up with a simple file that allows us to mill a variety of different size square holes in aluminum and mild steel. My file includes a spot face can cycle, a peck drilling can cycle, and a subroutine. Let's see how and why I did it. Recently, I made handles for a sliding machine vise, and each time I milled a square hole to size using a small diameter end mill. Then I carefully filed each corner with a triangular file. I filed and test fitted for an eternity, it seemed, until I was satisfied with the fit. I needed to make one more vise handle, this time with a blind hole. That would make it very difficult to file the corners afterwards. I figured that if I drilled small holes near each corner of the square before milling, I would not have to file afterwards. I decided to make a simple wizard using a spreadsheet to mill and drill a square hole. Now, when I need to mill a square hole, I use my wizard to make the process quicker, easier, and more accurate. If you have a manual mill, my wizard will calculate and provide you with the XY coordinates you need to drill and mill a square hole. If you have a CNC mill or a CNC router, the wizard provides a very short G-code, less than 66 lines of code, to enable you to spot drill, peck drill, and mill aluminum and mild steel. The wizard is written for imperial and metric units of measure. To learn how to make your own spreadsheet wizard, have a look at my novel way to write G-code video. Let me explain how to use my square hole wizard. The orange cell is used to set the dimension of our square hole. It can be changed by clicking in the orange cell, typing in a new dimension, and pressing enter. Before you can say abracadabra, the G code has changed. The yellow cell is used to set the diameter of the end mill that we wish to use. The green cell is used to set the depth of our hole, and the tan cell is to set the number of loops the end mill makes as it mills through the hole. Loops are very similar to passes. If we make four loops to mill a square hole to a depth of 500 thou, then the amount of material removed with each loop is 500 thou divided by four, making a 125 thou cut per loop. If we make eight loops, 500 thou divided by eight is 0 0.0625 per loop. The dimension in the blue cell is the suggested diameter of a twist drill we will use to drill a clearance hole in the center of our square hole. The size of this hole is not critical. We can use a twist drill that comes close to the suggested diameter. I included a conversion chart to help us choose a drill diameter. Below is a glossary of terms to help those of us that don't run CNC's every day. The first section of my code is written to help us stay organized. I included the file name 01. The purpose of this file is to cut a hole 0.375 by 0.375. The file creation date and a list of tools needed Anything written between the brackets is ignored by our CNC controller. For more information about the next two lines, have a look at my other video. The section below is the first operation, a can cycle for spot face drilling, one hole in the center and one hole near each corner. I placed a tool change instruction in line 40. If you're using Mach 3, you need to make sure your program's tool change setting is set properly. This setting 
is found in general logic configuration. Simply change the setting to stop spindles, wait for cycle start. If the tool change settings are correct, Mach 3 will indicate change tool with a yellow blinking light. When the CNC controller executes this line, the program will pause, allowing us to move the table, raise or lower the spindle to allow room for a tool change. At this point, the spindle has not started. I normally would have set my XY origin at the center of my workpiece, inserted my drill, and set its Z height using a slip of paper before the program began. But we have the option of inserting the drill and setting the drill Z height now if we wanted to. With the tool installed and set to height, I start the spindle and set its RPM manually. For those of you with automatic spindle control, I wrote an instruction to start the spindle automatically in line 60. Next we click on cycle start. The cutter rises to a safe height above the work surface. The drill is positioned at X0, Y0, the center of our square hole. Can cycle G81 begins drilling a hole 50 thou deep, one inch per minute. Then it retracts to a height of 50 thou above the workpiece. The next four lines of code are used to position the center drill in order to spot drill a hole near each corner. When all five holes have been spot drilled, a G80 command cancels the can cycle. The feed rate remains at one inch per minute. I wrote an instruction in the next line to restore the feed rate to 10 inches per minute, saving time when the drill is repositioned in the next operation. Mach 3 indicates another tool change. I turn off my spindle and wait for the spindle to stop turning before removing the drill and replacing it with a 1 8 inch twist drill. I set the drill's Z height, restart the spindle, and click on cycle start. The operation peck drills a hole 500 thou deep in the center of our square to act as a pilot hole for a larger drill bit, then drills one hole near each corner to eliminate the need to file the corner square after milling. The drill is repositioned at X0, Y0, can cycle G83, peck drills the first hole 500 thou deep, removing 125 thou of material with each peck. The drill is retracted 50 thou above the work surface. When the drill reaches a depth of minus 500 thou, the drill is retracted and repositioned at the next XY coordinate. This cycle repeats until all five holes are drilled. With this peck drilling operation complete, Mach 3 pauses for another tool change, turning off the spindle. I swap the 1 8 inch drill for a larger drill. The suggested tool for this operation is a twist drill with a diameter of 260 thou. Looking at the chart to the right of the spreadsheet, I see that the closest common drill size that will fit into one of my collets is a quarter inch. I normally use collets and you will see why later in this video. I set the drill Z height, start the spindle, and click cycle start. The drill is positioned at X0, Y0 to peck drill one hole to a depth of minus 500 thou. Each peck is minus 125 thou, retracting 50 thou above the work surface with a feed rate of one inch per minute. If you are wondering why I drill a hole in the center of our square, it is to remove a lot of material quickly to prevent Swarth from jamming up my end mill so I can use a four flute end mill and it allows us to use a smaller diameter end mill which decreases the size of the radius in each corner. 
When drilling is complete, Mach 3 indicates a tool change. I stop my spindle, remove the quarter inch drill, and insert a quarter inch end mill. I set at Z height, start the spindle, and click on cycle start for the last time. The end mill is positioned at X minus 63 thou and Y minus 63 thou. The end mill is lowered to Z0, the work surface height. In line 340, M98 calls a subroutine O10 and sets the number of loops to 4. The program executes subroutine O10. In its first line, G91 sets an incremental distance mode. The end mill plunges minus 125 thou into our workpiece. G90 sets the distance mode back to absolute. The next four lines allow the end mill to make a loop cutting a square out of our workpiece. The loop ends at x minus 63 thou and y minus 63 thou. The subroutine makes three more loops cutting minus 125 thou each time. The finished depth of cut is minus 500 thou. When the subroutine is finished, the main program executes line 350, raising the cutter 500 thou. M30 stops the spindle, ends the program, and rewinds it back to line 1. In the early days of this project, I created four separate G-code files. Then I decided to make everyone's life easier, including mine, by combining them all into one file. Getting all four files to work together was a challenge. The spot and peck drilling cycles worked fine, but the milling operation failed miserably. Instead of making a loop, the cutter would plunge, then retract immediately to 500 thou. The program would end and rewind back to line 1. My first thought was human error. I checked and rechecked everything. I also thought that the other CAN cycles were interfering with my subroutine. I tried adding a G80 instruction. In the subroutine, nothing worked. I took a break on Christmas Eve and went back to work on Christmas Day. After several attempts, I got a glimmer of hope. I found that the subroutine would not work if I tried to run it by itself. The problem had to be the subroutine itself. To make a long story short, I removed the line numbers and the subroutine started working again. It turns out that having a line number before the instruction 010 was causing the problem. After removing the line number, the CAN cycles and my subroutine worked together. Merry Christmas! I decided to give each a good test. They should be able to cut a square hole in mild steel to accept a ratchet without filing. The imperial test was to cut a hole to accept a 3 8 inch ratchet. This hole needed to be slightly larger than 3 8 of an inch. I added 10 thou for clearance. I changed my hole dimension from 0.375 to 0.385 and kept the same tool list. I copied pasted and saved my g-code onto a thumb drive. I clamped my workpiece in my vise, then used an edge finder to set the xy origin at the center of my workpiece. The spot drilling went well, but the feed was a little too fast for peck drilling steel. I made some changes. After cutting the hole, I reduced the feed rate down to F1 for all peck drilling. I reduced the depth of each peck and modified the program to peck drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole at X0, Y0 in the first peck drill operation. I also reduced the size of the suggested drill diameter. The feed rate in the milling operation was too fast in my opinion. I reduced the feed rate to 2 inches per minute. Despite the drilling and milling speeds, 
and the lack of a pilot hole, the end result was a pass. My 3 8 inch ratchet slipped into the hole with a snug fit. I updated the metric wizard to include all the improvements I made to my imperial wizard. To test the metric wizard, I cut a square hole using metric units and tools to accept a half inch drive ratchet without filing. The metric equivalent of half inch is 12.7 millimeters across the flats. I added the metric equivalent of 10 thou clearance, which is 0.254 millimeter to 12.7 and came up with 12.954. I rounded this number up to 12.96 millimeter for good measure. I used my center drill, a 3 millimeter twist drill, a 10 millimeter twist drill, and an 8 millimeter end mill. It was the first time I used my wizard in Mach 3 with metric units of measure. I found out that I did not have to make any configuration changes. I set my origin using imperial measurements. Strangely, when I loaded my metric G-code, the coordinates in Mach 3's DRO changed. Since my tool was positioned at my XY origin, I zeroed the X-axis. The y-axis zeroed itself and the z-axis was 1.27 millimeters. My tool was 1.27 millimeters above the work surface at the time. I do not have an 8 millimeter collet. I was forced to use a Jacobs chuck. The drilling operation was a little easier because I did not have to change collets each time I changed tools. Plus, I was able to zero my tool heights by loosely inserting my tools into the chuck, then lowering the spindle gently until the tool touched the top of my work surface. I set the Z heights and tightened the chuck. I was a little worried that the end mill would vibrate loose in the chuck. Unfortunately, I was right. Just as the end mill was finished cutting loop number three, the end mill shook itself loose in dramatic fashion. Looking back, it might have helped to increase the number of loops and decrease my feed rate. The bottom line is that end mills should not be held in a Jacobs chuck. The good news is the ratchet fits snugly in the hole. The bad news is I damaged my one and only 8mm carbide end mill. I let this problem stew for a few days, then I decided to finish what I started using the metric wizard and the metric equivalent of a quarter inch end mill, 6.35 millimeter, to mill the hole. I mounted my workpiece back into the vise and set my XY origin again, and set the Z height for my 6.35 millimeter end mill. I did not run the entire wizard again. I used a run from here function to mill the hole. I found that the feed rate was still a little too fast. The end results were the radius in each corner were now slightly smaller and the hole dimension was slightly larger than the original, but the ratchet still fit snugly. After this test, I decreased my feed rate when milling to 2 inches per minute in both of my wizards. If you use my wizard, you can increase or decrease the feed rate to suit your needs. I hope this video will help you to make square holes. Remember to set your Z height each time you make a tool change. Do not use a Jacobs chuck to hold your end mills and don't be in a hurry. Take your time. I have included a link into my wizard in the description below. I hope you will watch my next video. Bye for now. And thanks for watching.